if you'd like, uh, Diane um, can share with you guys and then y'all share and Noreen, you can share as well. And, and we can all just share, um, you know, we'll just go in in order and then we can start um, doing some role play, practice a little script. So I'm Diane, do you wanna share some of the best practices for our open houses that we do? Well, I always try to um, make sure to publicize our open house in the market center that we are in on that page. I also, we of course put it in HAR. I put a sign out in the front yard at least on Thursday, if not by Wednesday. So when people drive through the neighborhood, that's what they're looking for. Because I am finding and have probably for the last two years that a lot of people want to go look at the houses without their agents because they feel like they're burdening them um, you know, just to, to look at houses, to get the feel for neighborhoods and things like that. So a lot of people come in without their agents. And, um, so advertising the sign in the yard ahead of time, posting it on Facebook, posting it on whatever social media that you are capitalizing on, whether it's LinkedIn or, uh, but I, I we find Facebook is the best and we share and like the posts on the team so that it's getting out to all of our database and all of our friends and family. And of course, HAR and then um, just advertising it the morning of, advertising it the, the, the day before. And then I do a live video the minute something is brand new on the market. I go to the house early and I do a video, um, a live video, not just something taped live and walk them through the entire house before anybody shows up. Um, and I have found that to be very successful. People watch it that, you know, from all over. So when I, when they start coming in, um, I make sure that I've got the book there to help answer any questions that they may have. I have my registration cards and I take the time to visit with each and every person. Um, while they're there and answer all their questions. And then I immediately follow up with them that afternoon, the next morning to see, to get their feedback on what they felt wasn't working. And a lot of times they'll tell me right there what, what their comments are. I'll ask, okay, well help me understand why you feel that way. Um, if it's something about the roof or whatever they're seeing, then I make a note of that and make sure that I get that back to Teresa so she can get that feedback back to the seller if I'm not, if I'm representing buyers. So that's what and, I do. And one, one thing, whenever we do share it on, on Facebook sometimes, and I should be more consistent with this, uh, we are, uh, I've, I've joined a lot of real estate groups, local real estate groups like Houston Real Estate, Ladies of Real Estate, the Woodlands real estate, like I, um, I've looked at uh, where um, a lot of our co or associates, whoever, whatever you want to call them, um, co agents and all that other good stuff, where um, there are members of, and I share it on all the groups. And what that does is it uh, takes it from a hundred views to like seven thousand views. Yep. Right. So. Um, it's just spreading it out that much more. And then we do a boost. Uh, we, Arian will put it also in our Instagram, which is linked to our Facebook. So sharing to all the real estate groups, every time you get a listing, every time you do an open house, sharing that post to every real estate group that you're a part of. It's going to take you guys from 100 views to thousands of views, thousands and thousands. Okay. Okay, Beth, you want to share your best practices? Well, we're developing them, as you know. <laughs> um, so we uh, we do we do the sign, we do the Facebook, uh, we also do uh, the paid color ads, uh, you know, and advertise the open house through the the color. Um, through a command um, and then through the market center. Uh, Sarah, I believe puts them on Instagram. Um, we're doing, um, I, I, 
And you had said har. What is har? Houston Association or Realtor. Oh, so like your MLS? Yeah, it's our MLS. Okay. okay. All right. I'm like, what? I'm like, what is hard? <laughs> We're in Chicago. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we put them in the MLS. Um, we, um, you had mentioned that you have cards. So we have a we have a login book, and this is a battle that we have. Um, you know, some people want the electronic, some people don't, because the problem we have with handwritten then when you're getting their information, you can't read their handwriting. So you don't have a good email or a good phone number because you can't read their handwriting. That, that is something I would love suggestions on. What do you guys do? Or the one thing I said to John is before they leave, we can say, you know, ask permission. Is it okay to follow up with you and then verify it? I mean, that's the one thing. But you can't always do that because if you end up with multiple people in there, you know, sometimes they sneak out on you and all that kind of stuff. So anybody have any suggestions on that? Well, once I've encouraged the individual to sign in because I need to let the seller know how many people are here, I see what they're writing, you know, and I go over it with them and clarify everything right there before they walk away. Okay. If you wait till they are leaving at the end of the day or after the couple of hours, if they've been there a while, then yeah, they're not going to say, you know, whatever. Just do it right then if you can. That, that's the best thing. Okay. That's Thank you. Uh -huh. And then we do a lot of signage. That's the other thing we do. We do a lot of signage. We, we bought a lot more signs. We do flags and signs, um, you know, so it like, you know, there, there's flags and a bunch of signs right in front of the house. So you can't miss it. It's not like a one-off sign here and there. So um, as far as getting traffic in from main intersections and stuff. So we, we do a good job of that with signage as well when the open house is happening. Laura? Uh, my open, I really and truly, I don't do a lot of open houses. <laughs> um, because when I do an open house, it's always the, the second weekend that the listing is live. And over the last probably year, most of my listings have gone under contract in the first 10 days or less. So we don't get to the need of an open house. But really and truly, past what you guys do, um, Beth, you were asking, how do you capture people's information correctly? The one thing in my phone, I don't, I don't hand out business cards. I don't own them. I haven't had business cards in five years. Um, I think that they're a waste of money and I think people throw them away and I think they're, they're, they're very useless. What I find to be more helpful than a business card is in my phone. I actually have my, my self set up as a contact. I'll show you guys. Um, so I don't know if you guys can see that, but that's all my contact information. So after they hand me their feedback from the house, because I stand at the door and no one leaves without giving me that piece of paper, um, I actually ask them if it's okay if I text the number on the sheet, my V card, so they have my contact information. And then that does two things. One, it verifies their number. And two, it starts an open line of communication with me and that potential buyer. And so on Monday when I do my follow-ups, I'm able to give them a call and say, hey, listen, remember me on the agent that was at the open house that, that texted you my information? And then that kind of starts up the conversation. Okay. Did that make, did, do you, does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Also another great thing uh, to, um, besides the V card, the virtual card would be your app too. Hey guys, y'all want to, if you want to, you know, here, here's my free app. It's, um, if you want to look and see what other properties I can pull it up on my laptop and my app, you can put it on your cell phone. And if you, you know, you guys decide you want to go look at something else that's similar in your price point, you'll have it right there on your phone. Okay. Mariana, what best practices for open houses are you currently um, using and um, could share with everyone? Um, <clears throat> I, I like to have another associate there if possible, um, especially if the listing is hot and uh, 
and uh, I expect a lot of people, then uh, it's uh, or or the assistant or someone that can uh, you know uh, can share the duties there. And um, what I like, if possible at all, uh, to to contact the people right like that evening, like the people who left the numbers. Uh, just to keep fresh like if I wait first of all if I wait a couple of days I may not call or they you know because I believe uh, those people uh, visit not only my open houses other house open houses as well and to set myself apart I uh, try to reach them that evening if at all possible and I found that really really helpful That's it. Okay. Ms. Tara? Yes. So, um, in terms of open houses, right now what we're using is command actually on the um, our website and everything flows into command. Mm -hmm in terms of a sign-in sheet to capture everyone's information. So when they arrive, ask them to sign in, but it's on your, um, your tablet. And when they sign in, it goes onto your website. It's entered through your website and it goes into command and then just following up with them. Can I ask a question, Tara? Like, mm -hmm. uh, is, uh, like does the command have that feature that you can do that or? Yes, so it was on the, the website that you created, and everything's connected through command. Wow. So then it actually goes into command, and then you can set them up on a campaign, and you can follow up with them. That's great. Mm -hmm. Okay. Have you set up your website through command? Have you set up your website? That's a link to command. Because if you haven't, then it's not linked. But if you have, then it's linked. So KW website to command. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you should always already have um, open house campaign and you would just have to modify it. So um, based on, you know, the individual, but um you know based on what you're sending them but it's a way of staying in contact with them and the campaign once you set it up it's like okay the first one might be give them a call the second one might be are you guys still interested in xyz area or you know so you kind of set up the campaign already and you just plop them in there and that's a way of staying in contact with individuals but the main thing is following up afterwards. I mean, that's the key. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, hold on. Um, so anybody, anything, like what are some, some nuggets that you guys picked up that you're gonna start using in your open house? I'm going to check the command because I was kind of looking at that this morning and yesterday. So I'm going to see if that's been set up in your um, command, Teresa. And see okay. If we can improve upon that. Okay. Cool. The Facebook uh, real estate groups. Cool. Yeah. yeah that's, that was cool. Yeah. And it's, it's, yeah. I mean, all you do is join those groups and then just share boom, 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 boom. And it, increases your views by thousands it's crazy okay i have a quick question because i joined a little late i was on with the transaction coordinator so the facebook um real estate groups is that just with through kw no that's through your facebook so what you want to do is when you're oh. uh, you want to look at you know local groups that are in your area uh like we've mm -hmm. got houston Real, real estate agents, the Woodlands real estate, 
uh, I mean, ladies of real estate, there are a ton of local groups in our okay. area. And you could even create a group yourself if you want it. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And just invite people. Don't make it private, make it public so that, you know, people can join. Yes, Miss Laura. But there's, there's more than just real estate groups that Facebook works for as well. So okay. you can go in and there's like, like around me, I'm part of the Alpharetta moms and the Atlanta moms. And um, there's the garage sale groups. So like around me, there's like Alpharetta garage sale, John Creek, Roswell coming. And a lot of times the, the garage sale groups overlap cities. So it's more of a, a, a bigger area. Um, so go make sure you're part of all of those groups as well. Cause I'll tell you, not only for your open houses, I pick up a decent amount of leads, uh, which are starting to convert to, to business. Um, something Teresa and I've been working on this year, like on those groups, I monitor them. And so like on my Alpharetta moms group, or it's kind of like next door where they'll go in Hey, who has a handyman? Well, my response is quickly, Oh, I'm a local realtor and here's my handyman. So everybody that sees that post now sees that you're a local realtor and they now see your handyman and you want to tag your handyman in, in those posts because then your handyman friends will see because it'll show up on his post that he, or on his feed that he was tagged in this post. And so like Teresa said, that's what tagging and, has, and, and tagging groups, tagging people and hashtagging is what gets those posts out there and gets more eyes on it. So don't just narrow when you're doing your search to find places to post, don't just narrow yourself in a window that says just the word real estate on the group. There's lots of groups out there that you can post that stuff on that is well beyond anything that has to do with real estate that people will be thankful. Um, and if you can find mom groups in your area, people moving in from out of town all the time are like, Hey, I'm looking for information on the school. So just make sure that you've got a lot of info. I know we're supposed to be talking about open houses, but, Make sure you've got a lot of information on those schools. I mean, on, on the first of next month, I close on a, a rental that's going to be a purchase in the next 12 to 24 months because um, they're wanting to rent for a year or two and then they want to buy as they kind of learn the area. And the, the conversation that started that was, hey, can you tell me about the school? So I just actually send them a private message and just, hey, I'm a local realtor in the area. I grew up in this area. I went to the schools. My kids went to the schools. What schools do you have questions about? If I don't know the answers, I'll get them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. That makes yeah, sense. That's, great. that's a great idea. You become the local expert. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also, you know, creating your own group is a good way. Mm -hmm. Okay, ladies. So let's, um, anything else that y'all need to share? If not, let's get into doing some script role play practice. Um, so what, what would you guys like to practice? Um, anyone have some real life um, challenges? This is the opportunity for growth and to get, you know, some great feedback, masterminding on how to um, handle. Anyone? I think Miss Tracy's coming up to the bat or to the plate. Anybody? Bueller? No one has anything that they want to role play. How about, um, we haven't done this yet. So this is something where we, we said, we went through uh, with Peter Shabrias, the um, customer experience. Yes. So we are going to be implementing some things to that, which aren't like fully in play yet. Okay. Um, and we want to set up the timeline so that, cause we're inconsistent when God knows we're inconsistent with like everything, but um, we're inconsistent with 
um, like after they close, we okay. want to implement where like we call them like the next day. Hey, how's things going to move? You know, call them a week later and then call them like a month later. Um, we're going to implement um, where I, I always did it backwards with asking for reviews. I'd be like, oh, you can't ask for a review right after close. They're busy, you know, packing and stuff like that. And, you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do it if somebody's like, oh, review me now. And like my underwear, I don't even know where they are yet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So um we thought we would start implementing that like when they get clear to close and you know it's getting ready where we can do a touch reach out and you know and, and ask for it at that point uh right before closing when everybody's like always the most excited um and then the follow-up calls how are things going is everything unpacked do you need anything um so what would a conversation you know like that look like where it's just a it's like a care call right after they've moved okay perfect that's a great idea um, cause Tracy, John and I will be tagging on these three touches, like the one, the day or two after John or I will call personally, and then like a week later, and then also to be able to incorporate like a, a survey and say, Hey, tell us, how was your experience with that? You know, and, uh, and, and kind of get something like that going. So I don't know, something to that nature, cause we haven't started it yet. So, you know, I mean, I can talk to people all day long, but I, I want it to be, you know, purposeful. <laughs> okay. So who wants to be the client that they just closed and they're doing a follow-up call to see how their service was? I think that that's a great idea, right? Who wants to be? Mariana, you'll be, why don't you be their client? Either buyer, seller, whichever one. Beth, you tell her which one she is and. Oh, you're going to make me be the agent? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Of course you are. <laughs> okay. And, and, and if anybody has any surveys like that, that they want to share with everyone, that would be awesome. Mm -hmm. um, Diane, we have something like that, right? I know that Arian sends something to them. I, I have uh, one from Peter Sabrius. Um, we haven't put it together because, uh, yeah, you know what I mean? I, I have, I literally, he, he didn't have the whole, uh, he didn't have it as a handout, so I literally took pictures of it with my cell phone, and, you know, we've got to get it typed up. So. Okay. There's also SurveyMonkey, which is really great, and you can create your own survey. I mean, especially now that we're in a digital world that you could create and send to clients. We do, um, you know, ours, our MLS will send them a survey for us. That's what I'm thinking. Um, and, and uh, but I, but I think that, um if they weren't happy, what happens is our MLS will post it right for everyone to read and it's like, oh crap. Yeah. So if you wanna be able to uh, handle your own fires, so to speak, creating your own survey monkey, sending it to the client, and if it's not so positive, then that way you can handle it, okay? So let's, let's um, Mariana, just surprise them. Either you were satisfied or you weren't, okay? Oh, geez. I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to, what do you want me to be? What do you want me to be? So are we going to make this like that second call, like a week later, not like the first call, like a day or two later is super easy. It's like, you know, how's everything going? You know, did the moving truck get there or whatever. Right. So that's an easy call. I think the, the survey call like a week later would be more what I would want to practice. So let's just say you moved like a week ago. Okay. Okay. Ring, okay. ring. Hello. Hi, Mariana. It's Beth Geary. How are you? I'm doing okay. How are you? I'm good. I just thought I would check in again and see how uh, how things are coming. If you're getting a little more settled, and you know, if you got that whole pile of boxes attacked at this point. Well, we're just uh, like going really slowly, really slowly. But I'm glad you called because, uh, you know, a couple of days after we moved in, uh, the fridge broke down. Oh no! Oh, you're kidding me. I am yeah. so sorry to hear that. What, um, did you get somebody out to repair it? What did they say? Yeah, we, we need to repair it. Uh, like it was a couple of hundred dollars, but because it was hot, we couldn't be without the fridge at all. So it was, uh, it was a little bit upsetting, but uh, we handled it. I am so sorry to hear that. The, the timing was terrible. Obviously when, you know, we did inspection and walked where everything was operational, but um, you know, I'm sorry that happened to you, especially in this hot weather. Um, uh -huh. as far, as far as, um, the repair bill, 
uh, it, it was fixable? Because I know it was a newer refrigerator. What was wrong with it? It was just uh, the cooler, cooling system that uh, something was wrong. I don't know exactly what, but uh, yeah, it took a couple of hours to fix it. He had to leave, bring a part in, and uh, yeah, I was just very grateful that we didn't have to buy a new one because that would be a big expense. Absolutely, absolutely. And then uh, the home warranty, did you call the home warranty company at all? No, we haven't. Okay, because that, that would have been, uh, you probably uh, should have called them first. I don't I know. I was not they, aware of that even. Like, I didn't. You, you didn't remember about the home warranty? I, I know there was so much paperwork at closing. Well, let me tell you, unfortunately, there is there's not much I can do after the fact. But in the future, anything like this happens, please feel free to always call us. Like we told you, we're always here for you after closing. Um, if something like this happens, we may have a contact or again, we can remind you and say, because I know there was so much paperwork we could have reminded you that, you know, we, you know, we did have a home warranty and that could have been covered for you. Um, I'll reach out to the home warranty company and see if there's anything they can do retroactively. Um, I don't think there would be able to, but we can definitely check into that for you if that works. Oh, that would be great. That yeah. would be great. I'd really appreciate it. Yes. Yep. But keep in mind, in the future, remember, we're your realtor for life. So anything you come across, if you need a painter or you need, you know, a repair person, uh, anything like that, just always think of us. And we've got a, a long list of people that we can reach out for or reach out to for you. We'd be happy to do that. We don't go anywhere, that, remember? <laughs> that is really good to know because I'd like to, I'd like to paint uh, uh, the master bedroom needs uh, uh, a refreshing. So I'll reach out to you for the painter. Absolutely. Yeah, we've got a great guy. He's very reasonable. His his uh, his crew is very polite, and they they just do a really nice job. So I would be when you're ready, I'll be happy to connect you with them. Yep. Okay. That's, that's good to know. All right. Anything else that you can think of that you need, or you're just still trying to get all those boxes tackled? We're, we're still we're still like I said, going very slow. Like we need to declutter a little bit. We don't need everything that we packed. Uh, so, so that's why it's going very slow. Well, that's good. Then you're not putting stuff away that, you know, you, you maybe don't even want there. So take that's, your time. You're right. not going anywhere for a while. So no rush. That's it. That's right. All right. Perfect. Well, thanks for um, taking my call today. And then if there's anything else, let me know and I'll get back to you about the home warranty. Okay, great. Right. Thank you, Beth. Really no problem. Appreciate your call. No problem. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. <laughs> Okay, so the home warranty, you can't do that retroactively though. I don't think, right? No way, you, you gotta call them first. Yeah. Right, so, that's correct. Yeah, so yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I don't think they would they would even touch it, you know, if there was one in play. Can I make a suggestion? Mm -hmm. One Please. thing that I do, because I'm real big on home warranties, um, I make sure that they have a copy, a hard copy, uh, and I know a lot of times it's just emailed to them to make sure that they have it the day of the closing. And I, I suggest to them that they keep it handy so that in case something like that happens, they can grab it and refer to it. Nice. So well, try to remind them of that. Yep, okay, very but good. We've had bad experiences, you know, with stuff breaking down like a fridge or even just anything, AC. Sure. Right. Yep. Okay, cool. Okay, so. So where do you guys feel, um, because this is all about growing, where do you feel that there was opportunity for growth and where, where, what did she do really well? I think she handled really well my problem. Like, you know, uh, like she, you know, offered uh, whatever else I needed. I think that was really good. Um, what I was kind of waiting is uh, asking me for referral. Ah! Maybe. <laughs> Ask for referrals. That okay, so, so she's got a problem. Would you really do, go in after that? I mean, it's like here she's got an issue, and now you're going to be like, oh, by the way, you got a referral for me? I, I, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> Laura? It, was, it wasn't your fault that the fridge broke down. So Yeah, it wasn't your fault. Yeah. And Laura, what would you say? Well, and again, you, you were solving her problem, right? So when she said, oh, I think I need a painter, what my response would have been, that's when I would have asked for the referral, was right there, got it, 
So here's what I'm going to do. We're going to continue to work together forever because my objective is to be your realtor for life. And my email says that, right? Like my email says your realtor for life. Uh, so I would have said to her, oh, got it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm actually going to go ahead and send you my painter's number right now. And will you do me a favor since we're going to be in, in business together for life? If you know anybody looking to buy or sell, if I took such great care of you, would you mind giving me that referral? And ask for the business right then and there. When you're, as soon as you brought value to her, ask for the business because they go hand in hand, right? Yep, good point. And I, I like that, Pat, when you said, I'm your realtor for life. That made me really feel good. Okay. It felt like you're at my on my uh, by my by myself on my corner. Yeah. In my corner. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That makes sense. Villager. Hey, listen, the only time you wouldn't you wouldn't ask for a referral would be if they're like you were the worst realtor ever. <laughs> <laughs> like, Don't ever call me again. I hate your guts. Like. <laughs> I mean, well, we shouldn't use the word hate. You know, if you get someone that is so negative, then no, don't ask for. But, you know, here's, here's the thing is like, you know, uh, just kind of like how Laura just shared, you know, it's all in our approach. And what is our goal? When we're making these phone calls, what's our goal? Our goal is to see, hey, what, how well did we do? Where could we improve? And is there anyone else that we can help? Exactly. The ultimate goal is to always get referrals from our clients, right? Okay. Yeah. And I never ask for a referral. I'll just say, do you, I'll never say, do you have anyone you want to refer to me? I'll always say, hey, now that you're getting settled in, do you know of anyone else who's looking to move to the neighborhood, mm -hmm. who's looking to buy a neighborhood, or looking to sell in a neighborhood? Um, you know, that I could help just like I helped you. So I never ask, I never say referral. Yeah. Miss Laura. Do you guys do the promise on your, on your presentation, the, the promise for, I forget what it's labeled, but it, it, it's a promise stating that you're going to do such a good job during the transaction with their client, with that client that they're going to give you a referral before you close with them, sign it and give it back to them. Do you have any idea what that even is? Yes, we just learned about that and have actually not even implemented it yet. So, but it, yeah, we love that. It's the bomb. Yes. It, it's amazing. I've used um, it twice, but we don't have a good tracking system in, mm -hmm. in place to back that up and be like, hey, remember when we talked? So I, I was proud that I actually got it out in the presentation, but you know, just back to systems, you know, which are going to be the death of me. Um, you know, we got to have a system in place to, you know, then follow up with what we had said. Yeah. Right. And, and so that's another thing. If you use that promise in your listing and buyer's presentation, because that promise states that they're going to give you a, you're going to do such a good job yeah. that they're going to give you a referral before you close. And then at the bottom of mine, it's like, here's my promise. I'm going to be amazing. You're going to love me. Here's what you're going to do. You're going to love me so much. You're going to give me a referral. And here's what's going to happen. If that doesn't happen, I'm going to ask you for feedback as to why you didn't give me that referral. And so if you've closed and you're making that follow-up call when you're, even if they've had that, you know, that issue with the refrigerator, the issue with the air conditioner or whatever that issue looks like, you can circle them back around and just say, Hey, look, you know, I, I see you didn't call when you had an issue with the refrigerator. I haven't gotten a referral from you. Remember the promise that we signed. Can you give me some feedback and tell me, you know, what would I, what could I have done better to be top on your mind when your refrigerator broke? Because I definitely want to be top of your mind when you know somebody looking to buy or sell. Perfect. Can you, Laura, can is you that send your, your promise? One yeah. more time. There was a few of y'all talking. Uh, I was saying is that from um never ending referrals the promise the training that that just came about in training i i've got a really killer team leader and he is constantly <laughs> pumping us full of ideas um oh, and that wow. was just something that he said that we should put together so he so i did can you share your uh your variety of it with us please that'd be awesome thank you 
Mm -hmm. I'm just sitting here talking and I'm muted. Yeah, I was like, uh, I'm gonna be like Tracy, you're muted. So in one, one other thing, okay, that I would uh, encourage is where, okay, great. Um, you know, where could we improve? And what did we do really well? Two questions to ask our clients when we're making this call and let them know this is a, hey, this call is a survey call. Um, just want to see how we did, how, um, you know, when Diane first started working with me, I would call and she would know, I mean, this was years ago, I would call some of the buyers that she was working with to get feedback. How did she do where, you know, where's their room for improvement and where, what did she do really well? What did she do really well? And where's the room for improvement? Let them know this is specifically a, a you know, a client care follow-up how did we do it's really important for us we, we we know that there's always opportunity for growth right and then when you approach it in that way it's it's easy you know at the end when you're saying great okay and i'm sorry you know about the fridge any i'll shoot you a couple of uh vendors and as always if you can think of anybody please keep us in mind follow up with a handwritten note Okay. Awesome. Yes, ma'am. Would you also send out um, like a letter, like a handwritten note or letter? Yeah, um, afterwards. You know, yeah. Apologizing and maybe giving them a gift card to something that says, yeah. hey, have dinner on us since your refrigerator was broke. I don't know. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. One thing I want to um, ask about, um, I want to get a sense if, if people are doing this in terms of um, sending individuals the link in order to put feedback on Zillow and Realtor.com. And as, as a way of boosting um, your feedback on Realtor.com, is anyone doing that? I mean, I've, I've had some posts on there. And I've done some initiation where I sent out the link and was like, hey, you know, can you provide your feedback on there? Um, thank God it's all been positive. And that helps to increase your feed in terms of on Zillow and, you know, and we, getting business that way as well. I was curious to know, is anyone doing that? Yeah, we, we come from the land of Zillow. So all our previous years, we were Zillow junkies, like thousands a month in Zillow. Um, so that, that is pretty much where all of our reviews are is on Zillow. So, but I would never just, cause from the Zillow platform, you can just send the link and it's just a random link. I always copy and paste our link into an email and, you know, said, you know, would love your recommendation or something like that. And then we would email it out to them. Um, and, and right. it's, you know, and, and then, but what we didn't always do is follow up and say, Hey, we've sent you an email. We would love if you would take a few minutes. So we, we were never good at that. So that's part of our been part of this where we want to, you know, get better and, and ask for the reviews, even like we said earlier before closing, you have a better shot at getting them, I think, you know. Right. Okay. Because right. We, we picked up a lot of business from people seeing our profile on Zillow. I mean, where it, mm -hmm. it's not even property specific, they like read our reviews and call us. So we, we, get, exactly. we get a decent number of, um, of leads that way each year where they reach out to us just from reading, you know, cause there are some young millennials that they, they're all about reviews. So they find us and then, and then we get, um, you know, we get calls just from our profile. Yeah. And we've got, we've got about 120 on Zillow right now. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. yeah. That's um, some clients that is one that is one thing that they they do look at is how many reviews you have mm -hmm. you, do know, you guys focus solely on zillow or do you do other areas we, you know what i hate sending the links out to be like here do it here here and here so we do zillow because like realtor.com and we've been bad about keeping up with realtor.com we used to be able to copy and paste our zillow reviews into our realtor.com so then you're only asking them to do it once. We need to get better at uh, mixing it up and asking them to do Facebook um, or going back to some past clients. But I'm not going to lie, the last 
probably 18 months, we got really busy and we were awful at even asking for reviews. So I've got in, in the last, you know, 100, 150 transactions that we've done, we've probably asked for, shame on us, we've probably asked for 20 reviews. So, you know, we, so that's back to us getting a system in place to, to do that because it's so important. Yep. Okay, so this is really cool, you guys. It's kind of like we went from masterminding open houses now to really talking about what reviews can do for us and help us, you know, get more uh, notice online 100%. So who's going to start using, um, you know, whether it be Survey Monkey or making that phone call, getting something to where you can share it? Uh, you know, one thing that Arian does uh, with, with Diane's feedback is she'll post it on fa Facebook, but she does it really pretty. Like she makes it look so good. Um, and then we just all share it. I think that it's just such a classy way to show your feedback instead of, and it looks, it looks really, I mean, it does look pretty. Um, Diane, if you, uh, can, um, if y'all are, well, y'all most likely, I think all of y'all are my friends on Facebook. So I share everything. You should be able to see um, what uh, Arian does or Arian, if you could share with everybody. I, it's just a really good way. I think of, of letting people know, you know, continuously, this is, hey, look, here's my feedback instead of, oh, just the words. Yeah, Sarah has started doing that too. She'll make a pretty graphic and then put the words in, in with a graphic. And sometimes she's been even doing like a, like a, not a kind of a, I don't know what the proper terminology is, like a grayscale of house behind it. So the picture of the house they bought or sold and then the words over top of it. And then she'll just pluck that out, you know, like a, a little smidge of it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So who has, who else wants to role play a little, um, why don't we do one where it's like super negative? The buyer or the seller was just not happy with your service whatsoever. How would you handle that? Okay. So, um, <laughs> Tara, you're the agent and Laura, you be the client that is really pissed off. Just like you did a horrible job for me. Okay. Hold on. Let me. <laughs> Thank you. Let me get my timer going. Okay, ready? Go. <laughs> Hi, Laura. This is Tara with Keller Williams Realty. I was just giving a call just to follow up, just to see how everything is going now that you moved into your home. Well, to be honest, I'm not super excited. I noticed the home next to me closed three days after we did for like $15,000 less than I paid. Oh, wow. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, you know what? It's um, it's funny you should say that because I did notice that. But I don't know if you noticed that the um, the home that you purchased was in much better condition than the other one. The other one was a fixer upper, so that's probably why it was also a foreclosure. So that's probably why the price and you know the difference. Um, but I'm sure what they'll have to do is put money into it, which you didn't have to in your home you know, to compensate well, for that different price. I, I mean, I, I am going to be doing some projects. And by the time I put projects in, you know, from what I see from the pictures, I mean, maybe it was a foreclosure, but it looks like they only have to paint. Well, I have to paint too. Mm -hmm. Well, and my understanding was, is a lot more than, than painting, but I, you know, I definitely understand your concern. Definitely. Um, is there any other concerns that you had with the house? No, I mean, everything else has been been fine. I'm just afraid that we bought the house at too high of a price. I mean, I'm just kind of looking at some of the other comps in the area. And, I, you know, based on that, I feel like it's just kind of high. And I just question as to whether we, you know, had the best representation. Yeah, no, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. I mean, when we looked at the comps and what sold, um, you know, that was very comparable at the time. And don't forget, we had the appraisal done which appraised for the price at where you purchased the home. So, um, and you actually did have a little bit of equity in the house. So, um, 
you know, one thing that we can't control is the market, and sometimes it does go down a little bit, but you're in an excellent school district. So, you know, even if the price went down on some of the homes, um, keep in mind, it's definitely going to bounce back. So I don't want you to feel that you bought an area that's going to continuously down. Um, gotcha. I, I, I guess I forgot mind. about my appraisal. I wasn't really totally thinking about that. I was just so frustrated when I saw they got such a good deal. Yeah, no, I understand. I totally understand. And then you see someone down the street get a or next door neighbor get a little better deal. Um, but it, it is some, uh, you know, some additional nuances that goes with that. Um, as I understand, they need to put a new roof on that house as well, which you didn't. So, um, so all the, although it just looks like painting, you know, it might be a little more, but I, I want to make sure that you guys are satisfied and and uh, with your home purchase and you know are you guys getting settled in in terms of unpacking everything we are believe it or not my house is totally set up and we have every box emptied laura i'm not surprised with you in charge <laughs> that's awesome that's awesome right in time to enjoy your big backyard for the summer you know, they'll so definitely let me know. And, and as I stated, you know, we're going to support you with the, um, with your, your um, housewarming as well. So we definitely want to host that for you. So please be sure to send me um, all your friends information, you know, the names and the contact information so we can get that started for you because we want to make sure you have a great open house. Um, keeping social distance um, in mind as well. <laughs> I, I will, I will. I will probably send you that list by the end of next week. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, Laura. It's a pleasure, and um, I'll be in touch, okay? Oh, you, you ended it right on time. Okay. <laughs> She's amazing is all that is. She's absolutely amazing. <laughs> Laura, Laura's just oh, yeah, right. bam, bam, bam. <laughs> <laughs> So what did she do well and where's their opportunity for growth? Um, I think she did very well with circling me back around to the appraisal. I probably would have done that a little bit faster just to shut down the negatives. Um, and I definitely would have asked for a referral at the end, but past that, I think she handled my objections well. She didn't fluster. She knew the market. She knew the area. She knew exactly what house I was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I think she did a good job because I actually had this happen to me about a year after a client closed. She was just in a neighborhood that she kind of bought right before the neighborhood started pulling back for a second. And that's what I kind of circled back around to her was, oh, well, don't forget, you know, we had the, we had the, um, the appraisal done. And, and exactly like you said, we had about $3,000 worth of equity based on that appraisal. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's kind of right. I think he did a fabulous job. I, I really did. My only, my only suggestion would have been, like I said, circle them back around to that appraisal sooner because it's data. And I'm just a data-based person. So that's where I, my brain naturally goes. Gotcha. Yep. That's awesome. Okay. Well, I would have, I would have as well, not only the appraisal, but sooner than later, remind the individual uh, that, Hey, that house needed a new roof, and roofs range anywhere from eleven thousand to fifteen thousand. So that's your that's your price difference right there. And like yeah. you said, there were possibly some other things, but you knew about the roof, and that's what I would have also pointed out. But good job. Thank you. Yeah, I thought you um, your tonality was great. You didn't stutter. You didn't seem flustered when she would just kept nailing it at you. You know, um, one thing that uh, you could have where there's opportunity for growth is mm -hmm. reminded her of the comps. If you, were, if, um, if you recall, when we reviewed the comps together, this property, boom, needed a new roof, needed this, needed that. So then that way, um, and, and we, in, in you know, uh, that sales price, you agreed that it was the right price for this property after reviewing the comps. So maybe take her back to that. But you did a really great job. Um, you know, like I said, you didn't stutter. You didn't seem flustered. You just rolled with it. And she kept hammering it at you. Yeah, I was trying to. <laughs> oh, <laughs> 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 I was trying to. 
He's trying to pivot. I'm like, okay, what yeah. else? <laughs> she just kept going back there, and you're like, oh, you know. Um, and 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 it was it, there was there wasn't really opportunity. I mean, you could have, you know, I would have liked, and this is just me, you know, wanting you ladies and gals and guys, whomever's, you know, to do be the best that you can. Because usually John's on the call, and he may be, um, you know, just asking what could I have done better and what did I do well, right? So that we're always finding that opportunity for growth. So if, there, if we can find a way to make sure we get those questions in. Um, Sometimes you might not even want to ask though, but okay. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, exactly. Sometimes the timing's just not right. It's like, you know what? It just yeah. wasn't, it, there wasn't a place for me to do that. But keeping in the back of our mind that that's really what we're, we're, we're after because, I mean, she just went right at it. Ah! you know and it was like okay well what did I not do you know that wasn't that wasn't um the right time to ask 100% agree mm -hmm. and that could be something that you follow up with in an email hey um would love to you know um just follow up again see how everything is how are you feeling whatever okay so anyone else We got a couple of minutes left. So what are you guys going to knock out of the ballpark? What are you gonna do once we hang up? Uh, we got some really great nuggets that we all shared in regards to open houses, what you can and can't do, or how you, you know, to improve what you currently are doing. And also, um, you know, was sharing the, uh, I loved how everyone, you know, shared what they do when they're inside the open houses, sharing your V card, sharing your app, that sort of thing. Yes, Mariana. Um, v card. That's what I'm going to do. The first thing. Awesome. Um, yeah. V card. I'm going to research how to do it. And uh, does anyone know uh, how to like, uh, to put like as a, a as a signature in a text, maybe a V card. Would that be possible? So okay. I don't have a I don't have a signature in my V card. What I put in my V card is pretty simple. I've added and making a V card is just creating a contact for yourself. Mm -hmm. That's all that is. So you go in and you create a new contact. As you can see, I have my picture because everything that's branded is branded with that picture right there. And based on marketing classes that I've taken for social media, you should always brand with the same thing. Then I have my, I don't know if you can see, but I have my, my office number, my cell phone number, my office fax number, my email address, my office mailing address. But I also put the word realtor in that V card because what I tell them is once you save me to your phone, if you can't remember my name, you do remember I'm a realtor. So just search the word real court and I pop up. So I don't even have to remember who I am. Yep. And you just forward that to them. Correct. I, 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 correct. I send them a text message that says, hey, thanks so much for stopping by my open house at blah, blah, blah. Here's my V card for if you have any questions on this house or any other houses on the market. I'll touch base with you next week to see if I can follow up with any answers. So, so your clients or the people that you meet at open house, they just take a picture of your V card and it goes direct to the, no? I, 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 I send them the V card. Have you ever shared, like, have you ever had a client say, Hey, do you have a painter? And you open up your painter's contact information and you share that with your client. Have you yeah. ever done that before? Same thing. So you make a contact card for yourself. And then when you get ready to send that text message as they're leaving, it's, okay, great. Thank you so much for the feedback. I really appreciate it. Um, I see that your number is blocked. Can you confirm that? Is that your cell phone number? Great. I'm going to text you my V card so that you have it. My name is Laura Lerman. I'm with Keller Williams and the Lerman team. But remember, once you save my V card to your phone, I have the word realtor in there. So if you forget my name, but you have a real estate question, just in your search bar, type the word realtor, and I'm going to pop up for you because that's in, because when their phone searches their contacts, it searches their names, the numbers, any notes you have in a card. So anything you have in that card, We'll make that pop up. And so I just send them a text message letting them know that I'll be contacting them Monday or the following week. I don't say Monday because I suck at Mondays. But 
Um, but I let them know that that's where I'll contact them. And in the following week, as I'm going back through, I can go back through all my text messages and I can sit, you do one of two things. I can send them a text message. Hey, we, you know, we met at the open house. Did you have any questions? I had a few other properties. Would you like me to send them what's your email? Or I can call them in the same conversation. Hey, you know, I, I found a few other properties in the Roswell area. Do you have an email address? I can forward those to you. Great. Mm -hmm. I know we're, we're kind of running low on time, um, yeah. but one other thing is people that we haven't reached out to um, in terms of the best conversation, like, oh, you closed six months ago. You closed a year ago. I mean, maybe hey. you don't want to put that. <laughs> hey, just checking in with you. This, you know, oh, things okay. that where we are in our world right now with the COVID and, and you know, just um, uh, just wanting to see how you are you know we've got a okay. lot of turmoil happening right now and and i just wanted to let you know that i care and i'm here if you need anything and how, how's your new house how have you guys you know i apologize that i've not reached out sooner just you be you right mm -hmm. okay. awesome we'll do awesome yeah you ladies we'll are do. killing it positive energy you guys are rock stars mm -hmm. so y'all y'all are rock stars anyway okay ladies make it fabulous implement today what you've learned and uh, i appreciate all of you and y'all are truly showing up and absolutely doing amazing so thank great you job. okay thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. thanks bye